Well, hello and welcome to everyone. Um, so this is the quality session on feminist epistemology, uh, participatory action research and uh, grounded theory. We are very happy to receive today Jada Bono, who will present her uh, dissertation project. Jada is currently in her last year of uh, PhD studies at the Scuola Normale Superiore, and she's also a member of COSMO, the Center on Social Movement Studies here in Florence. Uh, before, she studied sociology in Padua and gender studies in Roma before starting her PhD journey. As she will present today, her dissertation focuses on feminist spaces in Roma and Madrid. And she looks at how those spaces can generate autonomy, resistance, safety, but also contention. Um, Jada is also an activist. She's part of Nonuna di Meno in Florence, which is the biggest feminist movement in Italy. She is, she is also part of the committee of a journal called Donna Women Femme, an Italian feminist journal, which is actually the oldest one, I think from uh, 1976, they're, they're publishing and they're publishing um, four thematic issues uh, per year. So as you can see, uh, the academic interest and the more personal engagement of uh, Jada in the public sphere are echoing each other. So maybe this is already a kind of hunch about what participatory action research is about, but I leave the floor now to Jada to confirm or contradict me. Thank you, and the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you and good afternoon. I will share the screen. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So um, first of all, thanks for uh, this uh, opportunity to discuss and I'm very thrilled to be here and to the um, Q&A part and also to know more on your uh, topics and research. Uh, I would like to start with this picture because uh, this is a picture of one of the cases uh, uh, were included in my research, uh, the House of Women Lucia y Siesta in Rome. Uh, and uh, I wanted to start with this picture because um, this is really um, a research made of uh, spaces and uh, uh, participants and uh, I am here alone. Uh, but there were many people involved in this project and many participants made po possible this project to develop and to be what it is now. Um, before starting, I would like to um, really uh, start with the practice of uh, feminist uh, uh, theory and epistemology. Uh, and so the, um, the starting point of this research, because uh, sometimes we are used to think about social research as a neutral and uh, objective type of research, but it's not. And this is really uh, what feminist epistemology teaches us about, about our research. And so what is the starting point? Uh, it's important to start from ourselves to understand uh, why uh, we decided to go for uh, a topic or another one uh, and which type of findings we are looking for uh, and also to be ethically committed to what, what we are doing in terms of uh, methodology and methods. In my case, as Ophelia already said, I, I am a woman, a cis woman, and I come from a small island near Italy, which is Sardinia. And these were really two components of my background that really influenced also my decision to go for this type of research. And then uh, I've been involved in feminist collectives for 10 years. And one of them, um, when, when I was preparing the, the proposal of the PhD, one of them collapsed. Uh, and this, the end of this feminist collective uh, really left me with uh, a lot of questions uh, and, and doubts and issues uh, on, for instance, uh, which type of emotions are involved in feminist relationship and in feminist spaces. And I really wanted to understand. And so from this uh, personal experience came out my proposal, which was based on feminist spaces as safer spaces. But I, will, I really wanted to question also what is a safe spaces. And so um, 
today, uh, what you asked me to present is something that I really like. <laughs> it's the, 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 um, the part that I like most of my research, so the methodological part. And uh, I would say that the three supporting pillars of my research were feminist approaches to social sciences and then participatory action research and constructive gender theory method. And these three approaches, as we will see, uh, really have a lot of common points uh, and a lot of uh, parts of uh, the approach that overlap. Um, but uh, before starting, um, even though, since I'm using a constructive kind of theory, we cannot say that we begin with some type, some type of hypothesis or um, a very precise literature, because according to the method, you develop your own ideas uh, during uh, the process of doing research. But I had these two research questions in my mind at the beginning. So how do feminist spaces, uh, feminist movements imagine, produce and preserve safer spaces? And what do safer spaces politically do? And this was really for me um, to focus on uh, practices and on relationship and what and on what participants do together in feminist spaces. And about the theoretical framework, as I mentioned, uh, of course, mm, with the constructive kind of theory, we don't know from the beginning which type of literature we are referring to. But at the end of the process, so in the writing of the last version of the PhD manuscript, I realized that the three streams of the literature I was committed to are social movement studies, um, I'm part of a, social, of a cent center uh, on social movement studies, and then feminist theory and affect theory, and I will explain it later. But these, uh, in terms of approaches to the research, these were the three main uh, approaches that uh, I realized were more fitting with my positionality. And so participatory action research, constructive kind of theory method, and feminist approaches. And all the three approaches have several points that overlaps. Um, but I will start from uh, uh, participatory action research. Uh, as you can see in this quote from Duncan, uh, feminists are presently exploring the far reach imp implications of a new epistemological viewpoint based on the idea of knowledge as embodied and gendered and embedded in the material context of place and space. This requires not an amendment or additions to allegedly universal, but in actually uh, masculinist and often Eurocentric discourse, nor a reversal, but a strategic transformation. And so in this presentation, we will discuss about this strategic transformation. What is participatory action? In research. Actually, even though I am using this specific type of definition, so participatory action research, there are many methodological traditions that embed a uh, certain type of uh, participatory approach to the re research. And here you can see just some examples, so like Kurt Levin and action research at the beginning of the 20th century, and then Paulo Fry and the pedagogy of the oppressed, false border in Colombia and the community re, uh, action or worker inquiry and co-research in Italy. You can see the work of uh, Romano Alquati. Uh, he was working with um, uh, in, in um, factories with uh, people working there on their condition together with them. And then consciousness rising groups uh, and feminist epistemology. I will specifically refer to this genealogy in this uh, presentation and militant research. But um, we can find uh, participatory traces in very different type of research. Also in oral history, for instance, uh, we can see some of uh, uh, these examples. For instance, here you can see a quote from uh, Luisa Passerini, which is also a professor at the EUI. Uh, from the autobiography of a generation. I did the first interviews with protagonists of uh, 68. They are uh, immersions in my own past. As I listen, the film of what I was doing then unfolds. 
it is difficult to hold on to such a double memory. It seems to me that no one has wanted to take it on until now. Sometimes not even those who tell the story. The mirror in which I see my image reflected is opaque. The interviews with the elderly on the memory of fascism have, have absorbed me and moved me, but they were not so heavy, unresolved, enigmatic. And so from this way uh, in which uh, positionality and methodology uh, are interplaying, we can see participatory type of research emerging. What is participatory action research about? First of all, this is not a way to do research on, uh, but to research with participants. Um, and it's both an epistemological and methodological choice. As Brydon Miller says, is a counter type of counter hegemonic approach to knowledge production. And it's also a challenge in the field of, and it's not so common in the field of social movements studies. Uh, it's a way to produce knowledge in a collaborative way between researcher and participants. And it, of course, depends on the specificity of the cases and of research participants. Um, as feminist epistemology uh, and uh, also constructivist grounded theory is a way to give attention to uh, reflexivity and positionality. It is a psychic, club, a psychic club process, so we go back and forth in the fieldwork and we try to understand meanings and values produced by a certain community uh, by considering those nodes and puzzles which are important also for the studied community. Uh, in my case, it was a way to uh, relate with non-hegemonic subjects, so women, uh, queer people, LGBT people, uh, and so on. And it allows participants to freely express on their experience. Mm, and as a constructive ground theory and feminist epistemology, it's also a way to uh, uh, give meaning of the social role of research. The, um, as, they, as scholars always said, uh, participatory action research goes from the beginning to the end of our research. So from the research design to the dissemination of results. Uh, of course, we start with the research design also because our department and institutions ask us to have a clear idea about our project. But then when we start with the fieldwork, we start discussing with the participants about the research design. And also we try to agree on a theoretical framework and to negotiate stages, uh, approaches, and also methods we will use during the field work. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of literature, so the literature emerged during the field work. And in the case of social movement studies, we really have to take into account uh, the own knowledge production of social movements. And so we have to negotiate between two very different type of fields, the academic field on one hand, and then social movement field on the other. And we have to negotiate words and meanings. An example, in my case, uh, in social movement studies, we commonly use the word activist. This is very basic, no? People we, which are engaged in politics, they are activists. But then during an interview, I had this uh, discussion with the, one of the interviewee, and she said, please do not use the word, uh, don't call ourselves activists. Uh, and I was asking why, and she said, because activism is something typical of associationism. That is, the point is not to be activists, not even to be militants, not even to be avant-garde. The point is to assume things in your life that then permeate your whole life. That is, it is not that you do activism. That is your life. It's not a separate thing. So I have four hours that I dedicate to the association and I do activism. That's really my life. It's not that I'm stealing time from something else. I try to do it in all the manifestations of my being alive. And this, as you can understand, was very useful to me because when she was questioning the concept of uh, activism, she was also 
giving me another type of view on what is feminist art use and so the practice of the personal as political. Just to mention, uh, I solved the issue by using the, the word uh, participants uh, in the thesis. And so I'm not talking about activists, but I'm talking about participants in the research. So in, the, uh, in my project and participants in the space. Uh, of course, it's not always to, so easy to solve uh, problems during uh, a part, do, while doing part, but this was one, uh, uh, an option for me. And then here you can see the plan of my research. Uh, um, when we talk about feminist spaces, we are talking about very different type of spaces. In my cases, I went for three different type. One, a women's house. Uh, in Rome, it was the International Women's House and in Madrid, the Espacios de Igualdad. Then a self-organized uh, women's house, uh, which in uh, Rome was Luce Siesta and in uh, Madrid was Escalera Caracola. And the third one, it was a queer and trans feminist squad. In Rome, the space of Cagna Solte, which, which means uh, dog without the leash or loose bitches. Uh, it's a very provocative type of, um, of name. And in Madrid, the Plataforma de Encuentros Boyeros. But here I will talk more about the fieldwork in Rome, which, because it was the most uh, intense one, intensive one, uh, because then the pandemic occurs and I was able to do a shorter fieldwork in Madrid, which all the consequences of the pandemic. Uh, it's very useful to carefully prepare the fieldwork. And in my case, uh, I used a content, a consent form, uh, which is quite, which was quite, uh, uh, useful because then um, I had the opportunity with this object, let's say, uh, to start discussing with participants about the topic and uh, how I will treat the material, the anonymity and so on. But then preparing the access is a very broad uh, process. So first of all, it's very important to uh, select the way we get in touch. So which type of uh, um, uh, gatekeepers, but also uh, which type of contact we use. Uh, and then it's important to respect the time and space of the community. Like in my case, with one of them, it took six months um, that they accepted to be part of the research. And in these six months, we were every now and then discussing about the goals of the project and and the and issues related to the project and so on. And then oh, to always try to be as clear as possible about the project, expectations uh, and so on. And then of course, it's very important to learn to negotiate with them. Here, I put some example of uh, how I get into spaces. Um, like this was, mm, this was, uh, this is a quote from my field note. Um, <clears throat> at the International Women's House, um, I was trying to take part in uh, this group of all feminists doing a self-consciousness rising on their condition of cell of all the feminists. And of course, it would have been uh, very important for my research to follow this group. But then the first time they invited me, uh, I was outside the door and they kept discussing about my presence how my presence would have, uh, com, com, let's say, influenced the interaction and so on. And uh, they never accepted me to be part of the group. So I never followed the group. But even this occasion was super useful for me to start understanding uh, uh, the place. And then a second, a second example from the second case, so Luce Siesta. Um, <coughs> I had this chat with the gatekeeper and she was uh, telling me that uh, to become like to enter and to uh, study, do research uh, with Luce Siesta, the only way uh, would have been to become part of Luce Siesta and also to help in practical activities as washing dishes. And that's what, uh, what I do, what I did. So 
I spent a lot of time doing practical activities within the, the space and with them. And this was really part uh, of, the, of the research and of the field work. And then the last case, which was the most challenging one, because this was the closest uh, uh, space that I already knew uh, before uh, the, the beginning of the research. And, and so I sent this email to all the people involved in the space explaining my research and also trying to explain how uh, my identity would uh, change from friend and comrade to researcher. And this is really the most interesting one because uh, with them, with Kanye Scholte, we did several assemblies together in which we spent hours talking about the research and they were really challenging uh, the words I were using, so safety and safe and security, uh, and then the methods and then the goals because they really mistrust uh, ac uh, academia. And so they always rejected up uh, to that point to be part of a research. And then <coughs> I think they accepted only because of the relationship of trust we already have. And this, of course, is part of understanding our positionality. As you can see uh, in this slide, uh, I understand participatory action research as a ladder of uh, intensity. Why? Because uh, we cannot fully apply PAR to all these cases. This is impossible because PAR is a very challenging and immersive method, methodology. And so, for instance, in my case, I couldn't do a full participatory action research in the, in, in the House of Women in the first case because it was a huge building, like uh, uh, 600 uh, square meters, and then it was impossible to to know all of the people that were involved in the space. And then I was young and quite unknown uh, for them. So they kind of uh, had suspicious uh, attitude toward me. Uh, but then for instance, uh, in, the, in Lucia y Siesta, we did a fully participatory action research type of, uh, of project. So it depends. And then starting the field work. Uh, um, with them, we agreed on uh, three methods. So participant observation, interviews, and focus group, but not all of the methods in all of these spaces. So for instance, with Kanye Scholte, we decided to avoid participant observation because we were too close to each other and it would have been very difficult to um, select which information would have been part of field notes and fieldwork and which not. So we did very in-depth type of interviews and focus group. And as you can see in this picture, this was a picture of one of the focus group we did. And I really tried to force myself to use other um, type of interaction than uh, words because none of the people feel, feel comfortable with the words. And for some of them also other activities um, fits best with their own personality. And so uh, in this case, I asked them if you would have been a part of the space, which part you would have been? And they were creating, uh, like uh, designing that part. And then they brought the group to the part of the space and they explained why and how they, they felt related to that part. And this was quite telling for, for my research. Um, during the fieldwork uh, as a researcher, something is visible. In my case, for instance, gender and age, but something is not. And so we always have to explain um, and to explain again our positionality. Mm. In my case, for instance, uh, it often happened uh, in, the, in Luce y Siesta which is also a women's shelter. So some women that are activists on one hand, and on the other hand, there are women hosted at Lucha for uh, period, some certain periods of time. And most of them are migrants. And they were kind of, uh, they were thinking I was part of uh, women hosted at the center. 
uh, and they get even uh, more friendly at me. So I had to explain what I, why I was there and so on. And then uh, in my case, it was also important to understand which part uh, was best fitting for the research. For instance, in the huge building on, of the House of Women, I spent weeks uh, standing in the corner and rooms and stuff. And, they, I, and then I realized that the best place was the reception at the entrance. Uh, because there, there were all of the women passing by and exchanging chats and so on. So it, that was the most important part uh, for the participant observation. While uh, in uh, Lucia y Siesta, the most important part was the kitchen. Here you can see a picture taken from the, from the kitchen because uh, that was the most intimate space in which all of the women gather together and they share intimate thought, but also uh, they do politics, they discuss about action and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and here you can see a quote from my field notes uh, in which one of the activists of participants of Lucha um, tell to other women, okay, she's Jada, she's one of us. From now on, you will see her very often. And this sentence, she is one of us, this was re really challenging to me. And it also disclosed to me uh, the risks and opportunity of uh, proximity. Because of course, this is a space of trust, but then on the other side, it's also a risk because you have to manage this relationship. You are doing a research and then you will tell these stories also to the outside. A way to deal with this uh, complexity to me was reflexivity. And so to always uh, try to explain participants what was going on, to deal with expectations of participants and to respect the time and energy of uh, communities. And, and uh, here it comes uh, the feminist, uh, how feminist approaches speech to uh, part. Uh, so, um, here you can see a quote from Sarah Child, uh, the decision to emphasize our feelings and experiences as women and to test all the generalization and readings we made of our experience was actually the scientific method of research. Put all theories to the test of practice and living action. It was also a method of radical organization tested by other revolutions. Self-awareness was both a method of arriving at the truth and the means of acting and organizing. It was not merely a phase of feminist development that would lead to another phase, a phase of action, but was an, an essential part of the overall feminist strategies. Of course, we're not searching for the truth. This was in 78, uh, but uh, we can say that uh, 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 the feminist uh, approach is already a way to do action and also to do research. And uh, feminist approach means uh, uh, to root the understanding of phenomena in experience, to start from ourselves, uh, to explain the position as a researcher in the field, uh, to negotiate, to take care of meeting discussion and information, but also of relationship and to let knowledge emerge from the unexpected, like informal chat, everyday life interactions and small encounters, but also to select what to include and what to not include in the field notes. So learning to ask, and this is really an exercise of consent. It's important to write it all down because all these reflections, uh, they became, become part uh, of our field notes, but also of our analysis. And in this sense, this is also an epistemological and methodological approach. Here um, is a quote from my field notes in which I try to do both. And I wrote down, the house becomes more and more familiar. As I walk around the building, I seem to begin to catch its movement, the rhythm with which it moves, the noises and the silences. Today, I happen to walk through corridors and find myself in front of archive photo photographs. 
Mm, I felt a strong and immediate principle of recognition, a red thread linking my experience as a young woman researcher and feminist activist with generations of women and activists. Um, and in the end, what speaks to me, what reconnects me is a principle of identification and disidentification. Something of my presence here concerns me as an external subject, as a foreign researcher who observes the dynamics and the actresses as a mystery. Another part of me recognizes the deep roots of my presence here, the threads that connect me to this place, not only as a researcher, but also as a woman, an activist, a feminist. And then to collect data, we always have to negotiate the presence, as we already said, uh, to build relationship with trust. But um, in my case, it was also important to ask about spaces and to be open and flexible. Um, PAR requires to make ourselves available for uh, practical emotional support, but also to be receptive. Every now and then I was helping women to deal with uh, Italian or to schedule uh, medical visit and so on. And this is really a way to become part of a community. And then we also have to cope with the unexpected, like the emotions of participants, the challenge to the role of the researcher, uh, suspicious attitudes or participants asking for direct involvement. It happened to me that doing uh, assemblies I was uh, following as a researcher. Uh, at a certain point, someone said, oh, but please, Jada, you're the one spending more time here uh, in the space. So please tell us what we should do. And of course, you have to deal with this situation uh, because this is part uh, of the field work uh, and, do, and to do this part of participatory action research. Um, here you can see several uh, unexpected moments during an interview, an interviewee when I was playing dumb that said, well, uh, I see you are a bit unprepared on the topic. Or here, uh, one of the um, one of the kid that was hosted at Lucha that at a certain point she spilled a full jar of glitter on the keyboard of my laptop and uh, other uh, events, but we have no time. Um, and then, as we said, PAR is really a method, a, metho a methodology that goes from the beginning to the end. So uh, it's important doing the field work to continuously uh, share part of the work, like papers and articles and so on, and to try to involve participants in the analysis. But uh, it's also important to make results understandable for them and, and to discuss if they are meaningful or not. As you can see here, a way for me to bridge par and constructivist kind of theory was to share the analysis. So with the space of Kanye Scholte, uh, we did several moments of uh, share analysis of data uh, by using online platform uh, that for them were safe, like uh, Jitsi Meet for the connection, and then Rise Up Pod for uh, the retrieve segments. And I put several uh, segments, uh, um, of course I anonymized them, uh, and then in turn one of them read uh, this piece uh, of interviews and they discussed about codes. And this was really doing constructive grand theory together. And it was super useful to me because I had the occasion to um, compare what I was doing on my own and what they saw in, the, in data. But then it was also an occasion for them to see themselves from the outside and to reflect on their own experience and on the history of the space and of their community. Then finally, it's important to prepare the living uh, um, uh, from the field work. Uh, this is quite difficult because uh, the, the part is a really immersive type of uh, approach. Uh, but then in, as in other type of uh, qualitative uh, methods and methodology, you feel the saturation. In my case, um, to leave the field work in the case of Lucha y Siesta, it was really tough because I was so uh, connected to the people there. 
but then it was uh, really necessary to leave the fieldwork, and I did. And for several months, I was away, and I've been thinking a lot of them because we, we were so close to each other at that point. And then it came that one of them, one of the participants, called me just to chat a little bit on um, the women of the house and what was going on. And to me, it was such a relief because I understood in practical terms how, even though the fieldwork is over, then relationships keep existing and the the network we build during a, a part really keeps existing well beyond the field work uh, and so i made myself myself available for uh, helping them in several occasions for instance if one of them was presenting something in an institution or whatever i i was with them and they were asking for also practical support or for instance uh, uh, this is part of the dissemination of results. Uh, I invited uh, the um, Lucha y Siesta participants uh, as keynote speaker during a conference in, uh, uh, at the Scuola Normale. But then uh, uh, other type of uh, uh, things we, we've been doing together uh, were to participate together in conferences and to write uh, articles or papers together. Here you can see a paper we wrote with activists of uh, Luce y Siesta on the method they use in the anti-violence center. Or um, another thing is that we use, uh, since they are dealing with the um, region, the, the government of the region of Lazio, the space of Luce y Siesta, they, they had to write down uh, um, manifesto, so a sort of uh, a deal, mm, and we use data coming from the research. But then, uh, for instance, with Kanye Scholte, we are preparing together uh, a science fiction fairy tales, fanzine, and videos on their own story. Uh, here you can see an example on, uh, of the way we share the findings. Um, I prepared for the, for the space of this was with Kanye Scholte, I prepared a game. Um, and in this game, they had uh, 38 uh, colored uh, cards. They were glittery, so to, to get their attention during the game, also because it, they, it took uh, six hours. Uh, and on these 38 cards, I wrote down um, the concepts that, uh, to me, they composed the concept of safer spaces. As you can see, I wrote down the concept like uh, the feminist time, il tempo feminista, and on top I put some retrieved segments from the interviews that to me they were explaining the concept. And then in turn, one of them had to turn on the card. Uh, they read the, the retrieved segments and also the concept. I was briefly explaining the concept and then we discussed it together. And to them, it was also uh, another way to see themselves uh, from the outside and also to reflect on their own uh, experience within the space. Of course, uh, even though PAR is quite a um, uh, rich uh, methodology, then it's also very energy consuming and it also has a strong impact on the researcher. And so, uh, doing part is also uh, means also dealing with uh, um, very strong emotions like uh, bewilderment and frustration and vulnerability and also power and the impossibility of being fully horizontal in the fieldwork with participants. So it's very important to take our time and take care of ourselves uh, during the fieldwork and beyond. And this is very uh, feminist practice. And finally, just to mention some uh, findings, where is the research going? So basically, and that's why at the end, uh, I found uh, very useful the affect theory. Um, I managed to understand the safer spaces as uh, spaces grounded in emotions and affects. And affects are not individual based, but relational processes and they generate concatenations of body. 
And as I will uh, explain, the affects are the heart of political action, uh, but the political work that feminist space uh, do on emotions has transformative effect. And emotions are not just enriching or empowering political action, which would reproduce the mind-body dualism uh, and their rational view of politics, but they increase the capacity for collective action. So the collective work on affects generate on the one hand well-being and on the other hand the pursuit of happiness, which in the field of social movement studies we will call the pursuit of social justice. And finally, for real, I would like to ask you um, how do you interact with your party with participants and if uh, would uh, your topic, positionality and fieldwork fit with PAR? Uh, how much of the participatory is also present in your research? Um, how do you negotiate feminist positionality with academic research formulas? How do you disseminate results? Uh, um, but also what has changed with the pandemic and if you have ever been involved in participatory research? And so thanks uh, for listening and I'm really looking forward to discuss with you.